Welcome to CCNA Labs, Cisco for the real world. My name is Jeremy Chara and I'll be hanging out with you throughout this series, uh, which, is, which is actually already done. Uh, this It's kind of weird, but I always record the very first opening nugget as the final piece of the series because I really want to have a good idea of what's in it. <laughs> the series that I create are kind of kind of fluid, so we kind of add things as we need to and so on. So that's the perspective that I'm coming from. And I want to just give you a few things to think about as you jump into this series because I think it'll really set set your mindset in, in, the, in the right way to take in this series. First thing I want to do is talk about the purpose. I mean, you might have seen on CBT Nuggets website, there's already ICND1 and ICND2, which is the uh, series that map to the CCNA exam objectives. It's the best way to prepare for the CCNA exam. So you might say, well, why have another CCNA series? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, and I'll give them to you in my priority when I, when I was creating this series. This series actually came to me as an idea. I was uh, talking with a friend who was getting into Cisco. And, and he and I were just kind of chatting um, while I was working and, and, uh, in the middle of stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm ready to take the exam. I've got it scheduled. And I was like, oh, well, I said, do you want some practice? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, sure. And I said, well, tell you what, I've got a client. I'm going to be installing a firewall. Uh, at his site, uh, it's it, it wasn't a Cisco firewall. Granted, to give this you know cut cut him some slack, uh, but it was a, a Sonic wall. Uh, they had decided to go with Sonic wall as the firewall. I was like, hey, it's brand new in the box, little TZ210 over there. Uh, why don't you grab that out? I was like, here's the public IP, here's the private IP. Just set that up and and make it make it do NAT. You know, just you know set that up. And I started working on some other stuff. Um, and about ten minutes in, he's like, uh, uh, Jer. Um, I'm stuck. And, and I was like, oh, well, let, let me look. And he had actually got into the firewall, you know, had a default IP. And, and by the way, if you haven't played with SonicWall firewalls before, they're very, I don't want to say very easy, but they're just web-based administration, you know, kind of point and click, 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 click. And uh, uh, he had gotten into the web interface, and he was just like, I, I, I don't know what, what to do. Um, long story short, eventually I found out, you know, just there was just a lot of key pieces like it, my friend knew it all in his head like he had studied CCNA he had read the books he, he'd even gone through a lot of the the uh, CBT Nuggets videos on CCNA and so so it was it was in his head but there was like this this link that was missing you know between it's you know like a doctor who reads reads a book but has never really touched a scalpel and you know and you're his first patient you, you don't want to be there so that that's kind of kind of the the perspective that I came from and I was like ah oh, I, I what's what's missing and I was just thinking there, there's got to be a link that can give people that bridge between the concept and the real world and the only thing that could come to my mind is just uh, apprenticeship that that to me uh, is really what education should all be about is almost like an apprenticeship to where the the best way to learn is not just to you know go at it with Google and try and find the answer yourself oh man for instance I was just I've, I've been trying to get into the Linux world and really learn Linux you know and how how to script with PHP and and all that kind of stuff and and for years I just always would start on it and I just get bored or just I just couldn't get there there was just something that was missing and I sat with a guy a friend of mine named Kurt for about four hours and it, he's just a a stud uh, on on PHP and Linux, and I'm just I'm watching him and just taking notes, and I'm just like, don't don't slow down for me. I was just do your stuff, you know, and I just want to watch and I'll ask questions. And I was just watching him, and I was like, okay, what'd you do? What? Did I? And I'm telling you, after about four hours of sitting with that guy, I'm like, I want to learn PHP, and I can I know exactly what I need to do to get started. So that's that was I would say the primary reason I created this series is coming out of that. I was like, I want to be able to create a series that gives gives that apprenticeship sort of feel to where uh, it's not just, you know, me talking about concepts and then being like, oh, yeah, here's how you configure OSPF and, and all that. I want to I want to create a series with a group of scenarios that that are lab based. That's very real world that I can walk through and kind of show somebody how to do what I'm doing. So that was the primary. Uh, the secondary that I thought with this is is now with with GNS3 that I'm going to talk about, uh, creating labs for Cisco is a reality. And I wanted to be able to give 
uh, you guys a whole bunch of hands-on to where I could just create the lab scenarios, I could create the labs, because again, it's, it's one thing to tell somebody, oh yeah, you can, you can study Cisco with GNS3, and, and they, you know, number one, have to figure that out and how, how to set that up, but number two, I mean, when you, when you, it's like, you know, when, when you first got into Cisco, if, if, if uh, you've been in Cisco for a little bit, think back to studying. You might have bought a couple routers off of eBay, and you get them in the mail, and, and you get them there on your desk, and you're like, okay, uh, what, what do I do now? You know, and it's the same thing with GNS3. It's a way cool emulation environment, but it's kind of like a lot of people get it running, and then they go, uh, okay. Well, looks like I got a router emulator. Got your standard router emulator. I mean, it's kind of like, what do you do now? So I really wanted to give a framework for how to use and how to study, um, you know, and, and just some practical labs. So, so that's that's the main purpose for the series. Now, about halfway halfway through preparing my outline and just kind of thoughts for this, I suddenly had this idea of. Now, you know, this would be very cool. And, and by the way, uh, let, me, let me add in a third purpose, um, which, which is very short, but it actually had a, a lot to do with why this series is here. Somebody uh, asked me about a book. They go, hey, have you ever read a book called Network Warrior? And I was like, no, but it sounds cool. Just with that name, I, I want to go read that book. And he goes, oh, you got to check it out. So I did. Um, I got this book called uh, Network Warrior. This is, this is it off of uh, Amazon. And it, I know the the print is small. Let me hang on. Let me blow this up. Network Warrior. It, oh, it says uh, everything you need to know that wasn't on the CCNA exam. And I was like, ah, an appropriate title. So I started I started looking at it. And I was like, what an amazing book. It it I mean it goes through. It's so real world. Not just like oh here's a router, here's host name and things like that. Of course that's in there. But like you know it gets into politics. It gets into how not to be a jerk when you're an IT guy. I mean it's just. Just a, such a good book, and I was like, man, that would be awesome to be able to, to do a series uh, that really wasn't just prohibited by the scope of the CCNA exam. You know, for instance, something you'll run into all the time in the real world is documentation. There's not a bit of documentation on the CCNA exam, or what is the best practice to do documentation, or how to approach troubleshooting, you know, and all those kind of things just like those those are total real world which is why I named this CCNA lab Cisco for the real world but it's not something you'd find on the exam so I wanted to be unshackled from exam objectives now I'll say that loosely because of course there's so much I mean you, you can see how much training there is on CBT nuggets of the Cisco world and network world so there's tons of stuff that you could learn but I really wanted to, to scope this to say these are just the things that you'll need for the real world. So, uh, so now take that and let me bring that into the user guided side of things. Um, when I when I was brainstorming this, I was you know kind of loosely basing it around some of the network warrior concepts that he was doing of just let's go beyond the CCNA, and and I thought to myself, who am I? Who am I to say that I know everything that people are going to run into in the real world? I mean, I do consulting all the time. Uh, I, I have my own my own technical company called Easy IT, uh, where we do. You know, it's essentially an outsourced IT department for small businesses, and and it, it's I, so I have a lot of real world experience. But I mean, there's stuff that I don't encounter that people deal with every day. So so I said I talked to Dan, the owner of CBT Nuggets, and I was like, what if we do this? What if we do kind of an experiment with a user guided series which which I said let's let's post this to the CBT Nuggets blog the CBT Nuggets Facebook page let's just I want to get people's guidance to to go to, to to turn to you and and the people all around you and say what do you run into in the real world what if you have a CCNA what did what nailed you that you weren't prepared for even with your CCNA because that's what I want to add to the series so throughout this whole series there was a feedback forum open and you're gonna hear me throughout the series refer to you know XYZ person said this and and they said that and, and they said this um, and so there was just a lot of guidance from the whole community uh, to put this series together, which which actually worked really well. There's a lot of topics I never would have added. For instance, uh, I added in site-to-site uh, -site VPNs. As a matter of fact, that became a major link to connect our offices uh, in this in this series. So a lot of that was just from the user community. That's that's my little coffee cup there. The mad scientists at work. I'm just trying this this great experiment, and and I think it went really well. Um, so now let me hit these last few things. Um, number one. 
Uh, the CCNA Labs, this whole series, is based around the GNS3 Lab Engine. If you haven't heard of GNS3, go to gns3.net, um, and it is actually a free Cisco emulation tool, allowing you to to emulate Cisco devices. A lot of people say simulate, but that's actually not what it is. It's, it's an emulation because it's the real uh, Cisco iOS that it uses. Um, so let me, let me show you. This is our topology uh, that we're going to be using. Now, this is the final topology by the time this series was said and done. But the goal of this series is we are actually building a, a branch office called the Nugget Labs branch office. And we, we kind of build this thing out throughout this. You'll, you'll see it build as we go. But this is the topology in GNS3. And I'm going to provide all the files that you need uh, to import this topology into a GNS3 environment so you can work through the labs themselves. And I'll provide all the labs and all that. But I realize that GNS3 may be new to you. Um, so, uh, what I will suggest is that you go check out, uh, GN this is gns3.net, and uh, it, again, is free. It's, it's actually written by a guy named Jeremy, appropriate, uh, but not me. He, uh, he actually is in France. And uh, if you click on documentation, I, I didn't even know this until I started this series, but uh, they, they, uh, they put a link in here to a video that I did um, some time ago uh, explaining how to use GNS3. Now, the reason I'm going this route instead of through the CBT Nuggets site is because it's linked right here, and CBT Nuggets, in all, all their graciousness, made it free uh, to where... Oh, I'm hearing myself... Um, but uh, this, so this is a, a completely free, I'll call it bonus uh, nugget that you'll get uh, to go through GNS3, explains the setup of it, things that you might run into, things to watch out for, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, that is uh, how to work GNS3. So if you haven't had any experience, I would, uh, with G I should say with GNS3, I would commend that to you to go check out uh, the, the, the uh, GNS3 nugget and uh, work through that. So last thing, I want to talk about and then I'll launch you into it is my recommendations for the series. Uh, and now that I'm at the end of the series, actually I would say they've changed since my original vision. Uh, this series is really a combination of labs that I'm walking through. Uh, in the beginning, I'll, I'll say you'll want to just watch, probably watch the, the Nuggets just like you do any other CBT Nuggets series. You might get a little, a little ahead of it by saying, okay, this is what I would do. But really, the opening of the CCNA Lab series is about documentation. It's about going through, making sure you've got all of your I's dotted, your T's crossed, you've talked with management, you've gone to the meetings, you're doing a design for the network. That's one thing I did add is how do you design the network? How do you buy the equipment? Where do you, you know, answer? all those kind of questions. So I would say those are those are just um, kind of hit those hit those right on the the uh, kind of design framework for uh, the series. From there, it's going to get into the configuration, and you'll know it. You'll see that the titles will change from kind of documentation into phase two, phase three, phase four, to where I'm going through and implementing this branch office network in a phased approach. Let's, you know, first off, cable the infrastructure. Let's let's then get into the switch configuration, set up the VLAN, set up layer three switching, you know, all, all of those kind of things I'm going to work through. Now, when you're getting into those phases, I'm going to be giving you the labs themselves for you to use in GNS3. So I would recommend, if you're feeling like I'm a Cisco stud, I'm going to go at it, I'm just preparing for the exam, I'm ready to go, I would say go at those labs without watching the nuggets, without watching me walk through them, because that's really what the, the majority of the series is, is me taking a lab, reading through it, and then walking through not only the thought process and some explanation. I give kind of like an overview of the concept. For instance, if I'm setting up OSPF, I'll give an overview of OSPF, uh, you know, some of the intricacies before I configure it. Um, but really, that's, that's what the series is. It's just a series of lab walkthroughs. Think of me as your answer key. Uh, so if, if you're at the point where you're like, wow, I'm ready to take the exam, let me test my skills, then go at it. You know, you do the, exam, do the, uh, the labs and then watch the videos uh, based on, I want to find out what the answer is or Jeremy's explanation on how to get to the answer. Um, now, if you're, if you're new into the Cisco world and maybe you don't feel super confident, then I would just say, watch the series. Don't even worry about doing GNS3 yet unless you're feeling like you really want to. Maybe watch 
phase two, for example, which is the implementation of the switch network. And then stop right there and then try it yourself. Get that hands on because there's, there's enough in these labs that you're not going to remember just by watching what I did. You're not going to remember all the solutions. So, you know, j jog your own memory. See if you can figure it out. And <laughs>